Knoxville took a symbolic step toward hosting America's most exclusive group of warriors next fall. We have some photos of the Medal of Honor celebration in Boston last week. Leaders from East Tennessee were on hand to accept the signature flag with those 13 stars in a field of blue, signaling the return of those Medal of Honor recipients to Knoxville in the fall of 2022. Men like Army veteran Kyle White. Today we present our nation's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor, to Sergeant Kyle J. White. Honored by a president, Kyle White was celebrated by an entire country for his actions in a battle this Medal of Honor recipient remembers as the worst day of his life. Was 9 November 2007 the worst day of my life? Absolutely. This photo was taken moments before an ambush in the mountains of Afghanistan. Then Specialist White would see a pack of cigarettes blown from his uniform by an enemy round and another bullet tear the radio mic from his hand. Two freak shots in a firefight that would stretch on for more than four hours. When you look back, is it, is it flashbulb moments or is it a movie? What is it like in your mind? I can still, uh, you know, taste, you know, the, the dirt in the air and the gunpowder from my rifle. In the chaos, this soldier expected to die. He just didn't know how by an enemy bullet or rocket. The RPG actually knocked me out. I was face down on a rock, and when I picked my face up when I came to it, so I was knocked out for seconds. Uh, a rounded actually hit just right in front of my face, maybe an inch, and the ricochet in the jacket from the round went into my face. And I knew that the amount of gunfire that's coming in, the RPGs, you know, the situation on the ground, the way it is, there's no way I'm gonna make it out of this. It's just impossible. Impossible courage is the tone of the citation awarding White the nation's highest award for valor in combat. Six and a half years after that deadly day, the military narrative reads in part, shaking off his wounds, Specialist White noticed one of his comrades lying wounded nearby. Without hesitation, Specialist White exposed himself to enemy fire in order to reach the soldier and provide medical aid. He would do the exact same thing for me if the roles were reversed. And so, you know, I, I came to the decision that if I'm going to die, I'm at least do what I can to help the people around me until that happens. Despite his own wounds, investigators found the then 20-year-old managed to take charge, set security, help treat the wounded, and even save the life of one soldier. Six others died in the attack. You know, I, I played the coulda, woulda, shoulda game for years, uh, like most people who have been deployed and, and suffered, you know, losing their brothers and sisters in arms, as well as those who have suffered post-traumatic stress. Uh, but, you know, coming to terms with, you know, hey, the things that happened that day happened, can't change them. And, you know, for me, I more take it as a responsibility to, you know, tell the stories of those that were killed in action. Kyle White shares a similar story of heroism with his fellow Medal of Honor recipients. They are America's most exclusive group of warriors. Fewer than 70 are alive today. Last in Knoxville for their annual gathering in 2014, this select fraternity plans a return trip as a group in the fall of 2022. On visits to schools and other community events, they will again share a message of service above self and an almost universal sentiment that they wear the medal on behalf of the fallen. You know, one of the, my best friends, uh, Sean Longevin, was killed in action that day. You know, I want to make sure that those names are never forgotten. 14 years after that life-changing battle, Kyle White relishes his current roles of outdoorsman, husband, and father. He left military service a decade ago, but this decorated veteran continues to perform the duties of servant to the ultimate symbol of courage and sacrifice. Organizers of the 2022 Medal of Honor celebration in Knoxville will kick off the year-long preparations with a flag ceremony 
on Monday. The last living recipient from World War II, 97 year old Woody Williams plans to attend and that event is open to the public and starts at 2 o'clock in the afternoon again Monday at the East Tennessee Veterans Memorial downtown Robin. It is a privilege to host it.